all of us go to sleep. Some of us dream, some of us blank out, only to wake up the next day. Sleep is so important to ensuring we are staying sharp, but have you ever wondered what actually happens in your brain while you sleep? Well, in this video, I'm going to dive into exactly that, understanding what happens to your brain when you sleep and how this simple act shapes us. So stay tuned and make sure to stick to the end as I give some recommendations on how to sleep better if you're someone who has a bit of a hard time to fall asleep. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel so I can continue to help you mine the gold in mind. So first, we need to look at the stages of sleep. Sometimes you sleep so deeply that you wake up completely refreshed, and other times you get enough sleep yet still wake feeling restless. Well, the reason for this is because sleep in itself falls under four key stages. Each of these stages plays a critical role in brain health. The first stage is what is called non-REM stage one. The first stage of sleep can last around five to 10 minutes and is usually a point of light sleep. Here, you're still conscious, capable of hearing and relatively being aware of your surroundings, so it's not a surprise you can easily be awakened. It's a transition phase between wakefulness and sleep. Then the second stage, which is called non-REM stage two, now, if you aren't bothered at this point, then your body temperature then begins to drop, your heart rate begins to slow down, and you're now entering the second stage, non-REM stage 2. This stage occupies most of the sleep cycle, and it's during this stage you begin to produce what is known as sleep spindles, which are bursts of brain activity, where rapid rhythmic wave activates. It's believed that when sleep spindles are produced, they contribute to the development of the brain, linking with learning, memory processing, and overall performance. This stage is said to last for about 20 minutes. Finally, if you're lucky and fall further into your slumber, you reach non-REM stage three, which is the point of deep sleep. This is where your muscles relax, your body pressure and breathing rate drop and is crucial stage for recovery and rejuvenation. Whether it's tissue growth, repairing muscles, immune function and energy restoration, this is where you need to get if you're an active person who exercises. Now up till now, the three stages were labeled non-REM or REM. The final stage of sleep is then the deepest point, which is where you reach REM or rapid eye movement stage. This stage is distinguished from the others as it is characterized by, as you guessed it, rapid eye movements that happen. While the other stages are all about relaxing, at this stage, the final stage, your brain becomes quite active and your eyes are moving rapidly beneath your lids. It's this stage you begin to dream and it's stated to begin roughly 90 minutes after having fallen asleep. What's interesting about this stage is that the brain's activity patterns resemble that of wakefulness. While your muscles are relaxed and you're almost immobilized, your brain and eyes are in a heightened state. This stage is crucial for understanding dreams, memory consolidation, and mood regulation. So now that you understand the four stages of sleep, when it comes to actually sleeping, there are certain key areas that are actively lighting up throughout the entire process. For one, the hypothalamus plays a key role in controlling sleep and wakefulness. The brainstem communicates with the hypothalamus, transition between these aforementioned states that I talked about. The thalamus then also acts as relay for sensory information during REM sleep, and the pineal gland increases melatonin production in response to darkness promoting sleep. Sleep also regulates essential hormones in your body. The production of the aforementioned melatonin, the hormone responsible for sleep, is highly linked with your sleep cycle. This is why sleep is so important for recovery and growth of your body, and it influences the output of your growth hormone, which plays a key role in metabolism and overall general growth. And then of course, as I mentioned earlier, during the REM stage of sleep, sleep plays its part in helping to regulate emotions and moods. This is because during this stage, the amygdala, which we all know is involved in emotional processing, plays its part. So with all this being said, and seeing how it works in your brain, as I mentioned countless times in many other videos, to get enough sleep is quite important if you want your brain to perform at its most optimal productive level. Because without reaching this stage of REM sleep or deep sleep, you have a higher chance of being more irritable, loose in your decision making, and overall emotionally vulnerable. Overall, there are many complex interactions of the different brain regions as I mentioned, and neurotransmitters, as sleep in itself is not an idle process. In addition to all of that I mentioned, sleep is also great for cleaning your brain out from bad toxins. According to some research, one study found that with mice, during sleep, the flow of cerebral spinal fluid in the brain increased. What this does is then quite literally wash away any wasteful proteins that build up between the brain cells when awake. As Dr. Mike Nethergaard, professor of neurosurgery in the University of Rochester states in regards to this research, process is like a dishwasher. It's almost like opening and closing a faucet. 
In reference to this whole dishwashing kind of process, another guard mentions that for the mice, when they were in sleep, their brain cells shrank, which made it easier for fluids to circulate. Then when waking up, they found that the brain cells would then enlarge it again, making the overall flow between cells slower. So toxins such as beta amyloid are just some that get removed during this cleaning out process. And this is important to note as this toxin is associated with Alzheimer's. So overall, as you can see, sleep is just super important, not only for living, not only for recovering, but also to get out all of that negative, bad toxins out from your body. Good sleep is necessary for living properly. Remember, good sleep helps with my consolidation. It also is super helpful when it comes to cognitive processes like learning, problem solving, and decision making. As mentioned earlier, it also works to help the brain clear out any toxins that accumulate during the time you're awake. It's also really great for regulating your emotions and helping keep your emotions stable and processing the experience as well. And good sleep allows for cellular repair and restoring your brain to the optimal levels. And additionally, with proper sleep, it supports better brain plasticity, which is your brain's ability to be flexible for learning and forming new connections. But if you found any of that interesting, make sure to give this video a huge thumbs up. And if you want to learn more about neuroplasticity, check out this next video. It's going to be a very interesting watch for you. And make sure to subscribe to this channel so I can continue to feed you nuggets of gold on brain and behavior.